Today, a showdown is renewed. A face-off between the two best teams in the ACC. Two of the best freshmen in the country. And a rematch of last year's double overtime performance. Holy cow. We go to second overtime. Today, a new season, the same intensity. An ACC showdown between Wake Forest and Duke. Welcome everybody to one of the classic venues in all of sports, Cameron Indoor Stadium, where the Duke Blue Devils have won 35 consecutive games. And Wake Forest comes in having lost for the first time last Tuesday at Texas. For the Blue Devils, a very short turnaround. They played North Carolina State and won easily here Thursday night. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Musburger along with Dick Vitale. Dick, I don't know about you, but I've really been looking forward to this ACC showdown. Well, I'll tell you right now, Brent, there is no doubt about it. The ACC is the premier conference in America, top to bottom. And today we have two of the best. In fact, Tobacco Road today is the basketball capital of the world. Well, what's happening in Chapel Hill with Connecticut, North Carolina, and right here this afternoon, Wake and we talk, Mr. Shashevsky, the deepest backcourt in America, and this diaper dandy, Mr. Musburger. You're going to love Chris Paul. Skip Prosser against Mike Shashevsky. Mike is in his 24th season here at Duke. He has put together perhaps the greatest college basketball program since the heyday of John Wooden, the Wizard of Westwood. Wake Forest traveling dark jerseys, Duke wearing the home whites, and in the background, the Cameron Crazies are already doing their thing. Place is electric, Brent. It's been this way since 10 this morning. Outside, Shashevsky tents were filled, and they will have a tough one on their hands this afternoon. Wake Forest has lost 14 of the last 15 meetings against Duke. Their lone win, of course, was that scintillating double overtime victory a year ago. They get it into the big fella, Eric Williams, and he puts Wake up a Duke. He's one of the most improved players in America, Brent. He has doubled his totals, averaging 16 points a game, and has been so solid. He must stay out of foul trouble. So 35 consecutive home wins. The last team to win in here was Maryland, and Wake is off to a promising start. Believe me, Duke can hit you early. They can knock you out in the first five minutes here in Cameron. But Wake with a two-point lead, looking patient. The fine freshman point guard back there for them, of course. Chris Paul, number three, and Mike Krzyzewski couldn't wait to see him in action. I'll tell you, you made a great point about Duke being able to suffocate and knock you out. They just did it to North Carolina State on Thursday night, and they did it to Michigan State, and also Texas blew them out early. Now off the miss, the Blue Devils come down. Gonna get the ball inside to Sheldon Williams, trying to get Eric Williams in foul trouble. Eric Williams fouled out for the first time this season in that game against Texas. That was one of the keys. Not an over and back. It was deflected as Ewing tracks it down for the Blue Devils. Wake's defense forcing Duke on the outside on this set. In 10 seconds, you see the shot clock down inside of five now on the run and the whistle. So we take a look after the traveling call at the AT&T wireless starting lineups here. And for Wake, Trent Strickland coming off his career high in Austin of 22. He draws a start today. That's the big change. Now for the Blue Devils, a very balanced team this season. In fact, they have six players averaging nine points a game for Coach K. In 10 of the 14 games played, Duke has had at least four double-digit scores. But everything feeds off the tough man-to-man -man defense. There is the offensive rebound and the putback for Wake again. Wake hitting the glass hard, which they did not do against Texas. So that's a promising great, sign. Great hustle right there. Yeah, they were out rebounding in a Texas game, Brent, 42 to 28. And last year they led the nation in rebound and margin. That's one of the reasons they're starting strictly instead of downing. They're trying to get more size in that lineup. Sheldon Williams wants it over the top, being fronted, ties it. That'll bring it inside to the big guy. He's from out of Oklahoma, and he has been really effective in the three-second area, but he gets himself in foul trouble. Now they go back to Eric Williams of Wake. Comes back off his own miss. A follow again. Loose ball. It's the Blue Devils going for it. Williams down with a jump ball tied up. Now let's talk early about the alternate position.
possession because you were at a game the other night <laughs> where it really oh. cost the team a game, perhaps. Well, it cost Mississippi State. We watch them battling on a glass. Look at the tenacity here, Mr. Musburger. This is not BCS, baby. This is basketball. <laughs> we're getting a genuine NCAA champ in our game. But look at the diving and hustling. Hey, you're right, Brent. That game up in Starkville, 2.5 on the clock, alternate possession, ball goes to Kentucky, they win at the end. Get rid of that rule, it's no good for the game, it penalizes a good defensive play. I think all of the quality coaches that I've ever talked with agree with Dick Vitale that they should do away with that rule. Off the curl, shot is missed, but the foul is called, and J.J. Redick will come to the free throw line. Dick, you said something very interesting about J.J.'s shooting ability. I'll tell you one thing, Brent. I really believe, as I was telling you, and I know this is a strong statement, and I want people to listen clear, as I'm going to be very, very specific with it. I think he is the best shooter I have seen since Chris Mullen in 1985 at St. John's. Now, I'm not saying the best player. I'm saying pure shooter. Check this number out. I don't want to jinx the kid. Check that number in that line. Yeah! Oh! And he ends the streak oh! with his first free throw of the day. J.J. 54 in a row, but you know what? Give him a hand. He broke the ACC record held by Jeff Lamp. Brent, what did you and I bring the kids him? Bad luck. Oh. I jinxed him by saying he's the best shooter I've seen since Mullen. And right away he starts a new streak. Number one on the board. When you take a look at the Division I records, Dick, he was a long way from Archie's 85 and so Reddick's string comes to an end at 54 and he has started a new one at one in low and Wake misses a golden opportunity that time to regain the lead you got to make that layup count when you beat their trap and they made him pay a price as they get to the freshman Luol Ding great job by Dang to take the charge Mike calls him as versatile a player as he's had in terms of comparing him like you talk about Grant Hill was versatile. He could play three positions on the floor, Brett. There he is scoring on the inside. He's versatile. Now watch him hustle and play on the defensive end. There he is right now. Going to step in and looking to take the charge. Position, feet are set. Dick, that is the second foul of the game for young Chris Paul. Paul and Ding, two of the brightest freshmen in the country. And on the inside, Ewing scores on a terrific entry pass. And so he's sitting right now, having picked up two quick fouls. And Duke, after trailing 2 nothing, runs off seven unanswered here. They got an outstanding player they bring in, though. Downey, a very experienced player, normally a starter. And the Blue Devils force a steal, and here they come. Their one stabilizer this year has been their defense. And low, and Sheldon fouled, missed a possible three-point opportunity. Dick, when you take a look at some of the numbers that Duke has put up this year, it is awesome. Coming into this game, folks, 400 minutes now since they lost that game to Purdue up in Alaska, all right? They have trailed for only 5 minutes and 24 seconds. Now they're going to tack on another 30 or so seconds or perhaps a minute here today, having fallen behind by two. But now think about that. 400 minutes wow. and trailing for just 524 in basketball. That is unbelievable. You know, I had them in their two games and their wins against Michigan State and against Texas, and their defense, as you alluded to earlier, was suffocating. And that's been the one stability that they've had. They really struggled earlier this year in their first four games shooting the basketball. Now, Fetus Danalus has been sidelined, had his shot rejected with a high ankle sprain. He missed six games for Wake on the entry pass, a little bit sloppy. Wake Forest on the turnover, and they do get it across this time. Downey, number four, and they get it back on the inside for only their second field goal of the game. Downey is a starter. He's a kid that came off the bench in game one. He had an appendix problem. Are you ready for this? Came back and played after surgery within eight days against Memphis and scored 20 to spark him at the Garden. No foul. Ewing firing. That's the three ball. Ewing's been shooting the three really well. Little confrontation here with Ewing. Oh, these Cameron crazies love what they're seeing. And this place is electric, Mr. Musburger. And Luol Ding 
ignited this crowd big time. The 6'8 freshman who has traveled a road from Africa to London, England, to Blair, New Jersey, to Durham, North Carolina. It was Strickland and Ewing exchanging words. Now watch Luol. This is why folks are so high on him. Look at the body control. He went up straight. No contact on this block. This is big time, and he's only a freshman. He's got a long wingspan. It's unbelievable, his arms. He's like 6'6", but he's really a lot bigger. Came out of Blair Academy out in New Jersey, where he played with Charlie Villanueva, who now is starring with Connecticut. Here is that early knockout punch coming again. Wake Forest must, must withstand this early Duke flurry. The Blue Devils knocked out the Wolfpack on Thursday night. They're trying to do the same to Skip Prosser here. They shut down Julius Hodge, a really talented player. Held him with seven points, and he had seven turnovers in that game. Off the miss, the Devils are coming down again. Inside! Just couldn't quite get control. And Ewing up firing from that spot. Ding with an offensive rebound. And the second tie-up of the afternoon, and you can huh, see that Dana Luce brings a little attitude to this team. Wake needs his size down low. Larry Rose, our referee, and this crew has his hands full here in Cameron this afternoon. NCAA basketball on ABC Sports, brought to you by AT&T Wireless. Reach out on the wireless service America trusts. AT&T Wireless. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. And Subaru, driven by what's inside. Fifty-six years old and a legend here at Duke. Coach Mike Krzyzewski, 603 victories. And folks, in the last 18 seasons, nine Final Fours. It wow. simply doesn't get any better than that. One is for 300 here at Cameron. That means he's won 303 in a row. And I know a lot of those are neutral games when you talk about the NCAA tournament. I tell you, Dang is one of the real outstanding diaper dandies in America. They play J.J. Reddick tough. They don't give him a chance to get free for that jump shot, which is lethal. Rick. Chris Duhon, number 21, handling the ball, the only senior of importance right now on the floor. We haven't even mentioned him much. This is still a very young Duke team. Williams misses the putback, and an elbow is fired underneath, and the foul is called on Trent Strickland. Remember, he got into it. A short time ago with Ewing. Now, I want you to watch this elbow. There is no doubt about it. Watch 33 here. Here's Strickland right there. The message. I tell you, they got a good officiating crew. Freddie Barrett does a great job as supervisor of officials in the ACC. When you look at Rose and certainly toward Warden and Kersey, three guys that have called a lot of big games. So he'll take a seat on the Wake bench. Wake Forest down 8 12 4. 14 14 to go in the first half. Cameron. Indoor stadium. You know, you mentioned Mike Krzyzewski and what an amazing job, but Skip Ross has done a phenomenal job in his short tenure at Wake. Last year won the ACC regular season title. They went undefeated at home. Levy pulled down the rebound and tried to maneuver into the paint against Dang that time. We're going to take a look at on the inside right now. Look at him trying to post on the interior. There's Danilus right here. Defense, look at him doubling up. Great job of doubling up on him on the inside. Really a super job doubling up on a basketball. This is what they worked with, Dick. Ding specifically at practice was doubling down on the post yesterday. It was a it was a point of emphasis for Mike Krzyzewski. Oh. Man's up and low. And that and happened. Beautiful pass. That happened because of a back screen and a lack of communication. Great execution with the lob coming off the back screen. Up 10 already. Look at the hustle. Look at that hustle. Loose ball. Wake comes away with the break. And they travel. That defensive pressure has them really frustrated. What they do really well, Brad, is they disrupt your offensive half-court game. 
they really become so disruptive. They're popping balls, deflecting balls. They've often said that deflections means that you're playing aggressive basketball. And there's no doubt about it. When you deflect the basketball, you block shots, force turnovers, that means you're playing aggressively. So Chris Paul, a freshman, sat on the bench after picking up his second foul, back on the floor, and he is learning early in his career what it's like to come to Cameron and face this defensive intensity with Duke leading it by 10. They come into a zone now, out of the man-to-man, -man. they're going to zone. Doc we're getting some minutes, Wake gets a turnover. Jamal Levy, the 6'9 junior, good rebounder and defender, gets to the rack that time for Wake's third field goal. He had a big game last year against Duke when they beat Duke. He had 15 points and 14 rebounds, Levy. As that zone, they went to a little half court trap, multi defense is being utilized by Skip Prosser. What makes Duke so tough is the perimeter game, making threes like that, my friend. And just as Dick told you, Ding with that great range steps out. Now Danny Ainge, among others, he of course is now running the Boston Celtics, is watching here closely, taking a look at the talent out on the floor and seeing a big man step out and shoot threes like that. I mean, he had to love that. Well, he better make sure he leaves him alone and leaves him in college right now. Danny Ainge, stay and leave him in college, baby. Let him learn. A reminder that uh, NBA weekend on ABC tips off next. Kevin Garnett and the Timberwolves take on Yao Ming and the Rockets. And then tomorrow we'll see Danny Ainge's Celtics. They host the San Antonio Spurs, who are suddenly struggling a little bit. Wake gets the three back, and it's 17-9 Duke. I know you're going to be down here for that game. My guy's working all over America. You got that NBA game with Tim Duncan. Tell him I said hello. To me, you talk about one of the class players in the NBA. It starts with Mr. Duncan. Certainly agree with you, Dick. And uh, he's a testimony to what you can do with your game if you come to college. And in Tim's case, he stayed. Stayed all four years. Williams on the putback. Gets it back again and this time draws the personal little shoot. But... Williams, Sheldon Williams out of Forest Park, Oklahoma, has to be disappointed, Dick, that he is not putting the offensive rebounds back into the basket. Yeah, you got to convert once you get down in that situation. You know what's been a key early in this game right now, Brent, is the ability of Duke to neutralize Justin Gray from shooting any threes. He knocked down eight. Eight threes against Texas when they were down 16. They came all the way back. But Rick Barnes's club, a good club, with a ter terrific freshman, P.J. Tucker, were able to win that game. You mentioned earlier about Mike Krzyzewski and his numbers. They just amaze me every time I look at think of nine Final Fours, three national titles. And I'll give you one even, maybe even much more impressive. Five consecutive ACC tournament titles. <laughs> No one has ever done that before, and that's what Duke is working on, is Randolph is hit from behind by Williams. I tell you, it's going to be special on Tobacco Road now with Roy Williams down at Chapel Hill. Certainly a future Hall of Famer. When we come back, we'll talk to Danny A. 17-9, Duke leading Wake Forest. I'm Brent Musburger along with Dick Vitale, and it is a pleasure to have Danny Ainge now wearing a headset down below. And... Uh, Danny, I know that uh, you're now director of basketball operations, running the show for the Boston Celtics. What's your feeling about watching Duke here in the early going? Well, this is my first time in this stadium, so this is quite an experience. I thought it was much bigger than this, and the atmosphere is amazing. Uh, both these teams are playing extremely hard defensively, and I'm not sure that the crowd uh, uh, doesn't affect the officials more than it affects the opposing team. Well, that's uh, that's an interesting observation because these are some of the fiercest fans that Dick and I have an opportunity to see. Hey, Danny, you and I were talking a little bit off the air about kids leaving the high school ranks, going right to the NBA. Express your feelings about that situation because I'm hearing a rumor that about 11 kids from high school may enter the NBA draft this year. Well, I'm hearing the same thing, Dick. There's a lot of good high school players this year. And, you know, ideally, I, I wish that all kids could experience the college and, and the four years of college, at least two or three years of college. And this is a great environment. And uh, I think the college game is suffering a little bit because of the, all the high school players leaving. I think the NBA is suffering as well. I think the fundamentals of the league have really dropped big time. I, I, I do not disagree with that. I think the younger players come in, the more un, more unprepared they are. And uh, but it's difficult. You know, that's the that's what we have to deal with. And when you're ch ch picking a high school kid uh, that has such a great upside, uh, it's a tough not to take them. 
Danny, let me uh, ask you because on ABC tomorrow the Boston Celtics are hosting San Antonio. I know you've hit a little downturn in the road here. Uh, how are things looking for the Celtics? Well, I think we're playing pretty good. Uh, you know, Paul Pierce has had a bad hand in the struggle the last few games. And uh, I like our young players. I think they're really coming along good. And, and uh, Jim O'Brien's doing a fantastic job with what he has down there. All right, Danny, I want to thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we'll see you later at the conclusion of this game as Duke leads Wake now 17 now. They just got J.J. Redick free off a screen. The biggest dilemma is getting him free for his shot. Once he squares his body, the other shooter that I've seen that compare him to Steve Alford. But I really believe he's the best pure shooter that I have seen in my years since Chris Mullen. They jump out on the freshman point, and then he follows up, has his shot blocked, scrambles to get it back. They have really done a magnificent job defending Chris Paul, who is the mayor of Winston-Salem, a great kid, Brent. An amazing story, Mr. Courageous, and just a great attitude. Yeah, what a wonderful story. One of his closest friends was his grandfather, and, uh, maternal grandfather. And unfortunately, uh, the man was murdered, and uh, he was in his basketball playing days, and the grandfather used to come to all the games, and he was 61 years old, and Chris Paul, to honor him, who had never scored more than 39, said he was going to score 61. He did score the 61 and walked off the floor to a tremendous ovation that night. It's just one of those heartwarming stories that you're going to hear about. You're going to read. He's a he's a youngster with a with a brilliant future here on Tobacco Road, and he's averaging Dick over 32 minutes a game for Wake Forest. You know what's amazing about that story? He got the 61 two days after the funeral, and the night his granddad was killed was after dropping Chris off. He said, "I lost not only your grandfather, I, mean, I got choked up, so I lost my best friend." I lost my best friend. How thugs out there. Five guys were arrested for beating and tying up the granddad. How sad. How really sad. Down a loose. Well, Wake must, must do the little things now to, to hang in the neighborhood of this game. They're on the verge of being blown out, but they're battling back. Down a loose. And, Williams give a little size and presence, and there's J.J. off the curl. Knocks down another three. Brent, they're, they're not doing a job defending that screen. That's two in a row. You can't let him get free for an open shot. you got to communicate, fight over the top. I mean, if he gets free, it's automatic. I think Kim Belton was telling me, I know you were here yesterday afternoon. They said he didn't miss a shot in practice. He did. He hit every shot. He has such a, a wonderfully in coordinated stroke when he goes up. It's uh, it's fun to watch that in practice. Well, Howard Garfinkel, who's here from five-star fame, told me he was the best shooter he's ever had at his five-star They force the turnover. What a defensive effort. Coach K's got these kids playing terrific defense. They are better than last year, my friends. And a reminder, next weekend, don't miss the season premiere of the PGA Tour on ABC. All the stars will be there at the Bob Hope Chrysler Classic. And they'll have late night highlights of early round action and live coverage over the weekend. 3.30 Eastern next Sunday, 12.30 Pacific time. Watch Reddy free himself up here. Yeah, we're going to get a real picture of right here. See, here he is right now. He's going to come off the screen to this area here. He's going to run his man right into the screen right here. Freeze it right here. Freeze it. See, he gets real close here so the defensive player cannot step out. He runs him right into that screen, squares his body. It's automatic, Brent. If he gets a, it's automatic. It's nothing but nylon. It's incredible, his shooting stroke. Seven points for the game. His free throw streak, if you want, with this did come to an end. And he hit his second attempt, and he's knocked down a couple of three balls. This is exactly what Mike Krzyzewski wanted. Jump out early, get a double-digit lead. They're coming off that game on Thursday night at 9 o'clock. A lot of adrenaline had to be utilized. Keep the crowd in the game. And if you're Wake Forest, this is exactly what you didn't want to happen. So Deng picks up his first foul. An offensive whistle goes against the Blue Devils, who lead it 23-11. Cameron, 8.28 to go in the first half. Duhon is really the maestro man defensively at the point. He sets the tone in his defensive pressure. 
Levy gets his own miss and comes back. Levy playing really well, attacking the glass. Wake Forest for years has been an outstanding, outstanding rebounding team. Since that loss to Purdue, Duke has run off a 10-game winning streak, and folks, the average margin of victory is 27 points. Reddick frees himself again, misses this time, and Ewing with the offensive rebound. And that is impressive when you talk about a margin of 27 against the people they've been playing. Ding puts it down. Pump fake. Draws the foul. Got a foul on Levy, who took the ball fake and rose after him. But what was impressive about that was the way Ding put the ball on the floor. Yeah, put it on the floor really well. Got to the basket, used the ball fake. And you know what? When you talk about Ding and versatility, I think of two guys that have worn the Duke uniform in my 25 years coming here who are very versatile. Grant Hill and certainly Shane Battier, who's now become a solid player for Hubie Brown, who's doing a heck of a job with the Grizzlies. Tell you the ACC is back stronger than ever, Brent. From top to bottom, it is absolutely super. Games I had the other night, Maryland, North Carolina, the electricity at Comcast was incredible. So the Blue Devils are rolling again. They're up 25-13 on Wake Forest. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. A lot of good freshmen around the country. These are my five diaper dandies who have really been productive in situations right now. Chris Paul, we haven't seen the real Chris Paul yet. Dang, we're seeing here. P.J. Tuck has been a real surprise. Chris Humphrey's an amazing story. He committed to Duke originally. Wow, if he would be here. And Drew Lavender, a little point guard in Oklahoma, has been a major factor for Oklahoma. Levy steps out and hits the two. But Duke has been shutting down Justin Gray with eight threes against Texas Tuesday. They've held him to one. Eric Williams has the first field goal of the game. None since. Chris Paul is scoreless in the game. And so as a result of that, the Blue Devils hold a 10-point lead, and everything is based on Coach K's D. Duhon goes to the rack. Hard. What a year he's having, Brent. He has had a sensational year thus far. Defensively, offensively, he creates opportunities for Reddick, and he's been their leader. Nothing like four years of experience gives you a big plus. Ding, fouling Levy. You know, we talk about Chris Paul. He's second in the nation right now in steals with four steals a game, averaging five assists a game. Take a look right here at Justin Gray's numbers today. He's got to make some threes to open up that defense. And they can get back in this game quickly, Wake Forest, knocking down some threes. And Wake has to struggle so hard to get an open look against this Duke defense. If the Blue Devils take it all the way and cut the nets down in San Antonio, it'll be because of this defense. And it starts with the guy at the point. It starts with Chris Duhon. He disrupts the offensive sets that coaches work on regularly in practice. They can't get a good shot on because they match up really well. And what they do defensively is they play as a rhythm. It's like a dance team. They work together. They function as a unit. Five seconds, and the point guard has to fire it out for a desperation. Wow. Three, and he answers. Big hoop for Gray. His second three. Remember, he hit those eight Tuesday in Austin. And what a great defensive effort right there. Five men, guys. They couldn't do it any better than that. That's the best shot they can get. And then a turnover. So Wake Forest suddenly can put together field goals. I mean, you and I are singing the praises here, their defensive effort. Look at this. They have to kick it all the way out. And he shot that from down to Raleigh, North Carolina. Now let's see what the defense can do here. Look at the three-point numbers thus far. Daniels has it knocked away. Ding with that great reach. But they give it back. Sloppy coming out with the basketball. Wake's got to have a spurt right now. they got to have a spurt to go into the locker room with some feeling of momentum that you can win, not just compete. Only down nine right now. Look at the turnovers are equal. I love this little guy. What a great High attitude. screen from Danilus. And that's his first field goal of the game, and it's a big one because suddenly he has made this a six-point game back-to-back -back threes. All of a sudden, you knock down two trifectas. We were talking about how important it is to make the three. Gray and Paul answer, and you got yourself a basketball game. Now Wake needs to toughen up the D down by the basket. 
Williams is fouled. They doubled him up, and he is fouled down by the baseline. Very tough to double up on Duke because once you double up, if they rotate the ball, they're going to get an open shot. Let me skip past him. He's relaxed. What a great job he did at Xavier. Was an assistant for years there on the Pete Gillen. Took over, did a phenomenal job. There was some worry that he was going to go to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh offered him the job and turned down. That's his home town. To stay awake. They got him a contract like you got. You know, mega, mega dollars to keep you there. <laughs> By the way, great job ah! in the Sugar Bowl partner. You did a phenomenal job. You know I'm a football nut as well as basketball. Gary and you did a great job. Yeah, Gary Daniels and I were blessed with the LSU in Oklahoma. We ended up being a dandy of a football game down in New Orleans. Should have been blessed with LSU and Southern Cal. <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> I mean, we'd have done it the next week if they'd ask us. <laughs> it seems so if easy Gateway to do. Computers had offered me that oh, kind no, of money. No. I'd have been there. So, oh, yeah. so easy to do. Well, tomorrow, America Olympic medalist Casey Fitzrandolph, Kip Carpenter, Joy Cheek, and Jennifer Rodriguez go for the gold. The World Sprint Skating Skating Championships tomorrow, Dick, at three Eastern noon, right here on ABC Sports. I tell you one thing about Wake Forest: they got a bunch of goody kids with a. Great winning mentality, and they're not just going to roll over. They're going to be battling and battling here all afternoon. Wide open, and Miss Danilus inside. Williams did a great job, Dick, of getting a hand on that ball. They need Danilus in that lineup. They really need him. He's an experienced player preseason. He's picked all ACC. He's had a high ankle sp sprain. Here he is on a baseline. Danilus. He's down there. 12 foot jumper from the wing and it's 27 23 a lot of credit now to Wake Forest they have battled their way back in and coach K is furious with this team letting this big lead slip away and you got to credit as you said Wake Forest he's an excellent medium range shot that's a shot that's really lost now in college could see from the field wow. suddenly Wake Forest warming up and believe me Mike K is not coach K is not talking down there about his offense it's the defense hey, one thing about look at the intensity that this man brings to this out of Chicago Illinois went to West Point played for Bobby Knight coached at West Point came down here struggled in his early years and then he put together the big Blue Devil machine first three years won a total of 38 games but they had an impatient AD. Instead, they had a brilliant guy in Tom Butters who was willing to wait it out. Can you imagine if the AD was the guy at Nebraska, Steve Peterson? We might not have had a Mike Krzyzewski. I mean, he gets rid of Frank Solich, who wins over 70% of his games because he said they weren't contending with Oklahoma. How sick is that? Patience is a great virtue. Something I wish I had. <laughs> It's great seeing you. I haven't seen you so long. Hey, he just invited me to Montana. I've never been to Montana. I'm going to your farm out there. Get a horse. I want to ride a horse. We got some horses for you, partner. <laughs> I got some for you. I got one that's got your name all over. <laughs> yippee yippee ki <laughs> Folks, can you see Mr. Vitale in a hat and boots, baby? Huh? <laughs> Ten seconds and hold on for your life, baby. I got a few. <laughs> we'll take you over to Miles City where they sell them bucking horses. <laughs> it's got Blake to help me, man. <laughs> Your sons. <laughs> they really need the crowd here today. Coach Krzyzewski said we have to feel the adrenaline coming from this crowd. Our legs might be a little tired after the effort we gave Thursday, but this crowd will not disappoint them. Ewing. Fouls Gray moves to the free throw line here at the 417 mark. That's some interesting things that can happen today in college basketball. North Carolina very capable of beating anyone at home. Great starting five. Boy, we just brought back the excitement. If they beat Connecticut, and Okafor starting to play like Okafor now, but if they beat Connecticut and Duke wins here, Duke can go. Deja vu to Maryland as number one in America. And last year when they went number one down here to Turf Country, you and I did the game. Duke got beat. Handoff for the highest one for you. It frees Duhon. Coming around, this is the three. And gray to the glass for Wake Forest. And you cannot say enough about the Demon Deacons' comeback. Dana loose is loose. 
Missed a left-handed shot, but tapped back in by Strickland. Strickland, a good athlete, a runner and jumper, earned the start after his performance against Texas with 22. See, they're getting a little momentum now going in at halftime. This happened also the other night for Maryland. They were really struggling. The ball goes in deep. Williams scores. They were struggling against North Carolina, but made a run at the half, and it came out of one. Danilus misses the three. Randolph. Seals off the glass. Duke draws the foul underneath. They got to get Dan loose in the game condition. The situation practice is one thing, but he hasn't had a whole lot of game action because of an ankle sprain, and he's too valuable to this team if they're going to win the ACC championship in a regular season again. Now 3.33 to go. 31-25. Wake. Battled their way back in this. They don't want to let it get away from him here in the closing three minutes of the first half. And you don't want to put this kid on a free throw line. I mean, he missed one now. He may not miss another one for a month. Look at that follow through for you young people out there. Look at the great follow through, the rotation, the backspin, the extension. Another well, reminder of what's coming up on the TGI Friday's halftime report. Pittsburgh are they staying unbeaten against Rutgers and then a big one coming up on big Monday against Connecticut Georgia against Kentucky Now the SEC and a look ahead to the Timberwolves and the Rockets that follows this NBA action Here on ABC championship television right now the Blue Devils lead the Demon Deacons 33 25 Two good basketball teams here at Duke Elena beard at 9 15 this morning Working out, and then she said, "Wait a minute, that's a cameraman up there shooting me. I'm just out here for an early morning shoot around by myself. What you doing up there?" She's one of the best in the country, Dick. Oh, without a doubt, their team is one of the best. Obviously, number one right now. Talked to Gail Gustin Pores earlier. Hey, I got a little. If somebody could spell the name Shashevsky and Gustin Kors, I'd give them a prize, but I can't make the offer because somebody will cheat out there. Could you imagine spelling those two names? Meanwhile, Eric Williams with a big hoop for the Deacons after that timeout. They get it low, and there's a block and a foul call. If there is a problem with 6'9", Eric Williams of Wake Forest, it's the foul situation. And, of course, he fouled out for the first time this season last Tuesday night. Uh, as we follow up that story with the uh, with the men and the women, both programs in the top 25 here. Take a look at those top three. Unbelievable. You know, Stanford, we haven't talked a lot of men's basketball. You talk about balance. They got five great starters, and they did something that's unheard of to me. To go four consecutive years to McHale Center and beat Arizona four times in a row up in Arizona, I mean, that is unbelievably unique. You and I, great chance to do that Stanford-Arizona game, the rematch, which will be down there at uh, February 7th, right down here in Palo Alto. Mike Montgomery has to be right now. If you're picking a star of stars in the coaching fraternity, he'd have to be my choice as national coach of the year, followed by Skip Prosser as number two. They better get it done at Stanford because UCLA is coming on. Well, they will. I'll tell you, they're a program on a rise. Ben Holland's got them buying into his system. And when he gets players like he'll get starting next year, UCLA will be back. So here it's 34-27. Three minutes to go in the first half. Senior Duhon controlling the dribble. And Williams steps out away from the basket, bringing Eric with him. Now he puts it on the floor. Jump pass inside low to Ding. Good ball handling by Ding. He was in very low that time. Soft hands and the field goal. Well, nice job executing horizontal screen. Got them free inside. Very unselfish play. Another trademark of winning programs like Duke. Make the extra pass. Now Eric double teamed. Blocked by Sheldon Williams. And putting it down is Duhon and Duke spurting again. Got to get Ewing free for a jumper. The three from Ewing. And just like that, Dick, it is 39-27. The lead is back to a dozen. And the momentum has arrived at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Look at these 1,500 on the SATs going wacko. Here's Duhon going to find his buddy, Mr. Ewing, who's been shooting the three exceptionally well lately. He and J.J. Redick have found their rhythm. They're healthy. And when they're making threes, they are so tough. Look at these kids, Brent. All 1,500 on the SATs. I had 
1,500, I took it three times. 500, 500, 500. Well, snowboard is slope style, women's Erex next Saturday. Don't miss a minute of the high flying action as ABC Sports heads to Aspen to kick off coverage of the 2004 Winter X Games. It all begins next Saturday at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific, right here on ABC. Prosser was not a happy coach during that timeout. He got right in his players' faces that time, urging them to, to not let down the way they did defensively because they let Duke open up a double digit lead again. He's done a great job recruiting in the state of North Carolina. Has an outstanding assistant in Jeff Battle and Dino Gordio, former West Point coach. Eric forces it against the double team. Great save by Reddick into the hands of Randolph. See, they've watched him so much on tape and video. And Williams, they really understand and when he's going to release the ball. They're ready for Ewing it. forces it off the front of the iron into the hands of Danilux. Let's see now if Wake can take advantage of it. And a block at the other end by Sheldon Williams. They've been blocking a lot of shots this year. 7.1 per center, per game rather. 47 by Williams coming into this game. There's Williams down to the inside. There's the timing by Randolph. Randolph and Williams were teammates in the AAU competition. Played together with one another. Justin Gray, by the way, no, his roommate was in high school, Carmelo Anthony. Dana loose, misses the three. Dick, looking at Sheldon Williams, he has six blocks in this game now. That is number six. That ties his career high, so he'll break that, you would think, before this game is over. So you talked about his shot blocking prowess and uh, that's pretty remarkable here already well you know the school record is 6.3 in 98 99 season they're right now averaging 7.1 and it looks like that's going to get higher you know great room with carmelo anthony unbelievable i think the pistons made a major major error not drafting anthony number two and i said it draft day and i'll say it again that's a major mistake what do you think mr musburger mm -hmm. with the nba well i would agree with you off of what i've seen so far dick uh, i watched carmelo anthony in a uh, in a tough game against the lakers and I, I'll tell you, you youngsters who are thinking about going into the NBA right out of high school, you should watch Carmelo Anthony. He knows so much more about the game having spent a year at Syracuse under college coaching. They don't have time to teach you exactly. the fundamentals of the NBA. Same Even that. LeBron James would be better served had he gone to college and they waved that one off, that three ball by, uh, by Reddick. Oh, you can't know. And you know, emotionally, as Phil Jackson says, forget about the basketball part of it. The youngsters learn to grow up a little bit better if they go on to college and they play with their peers. I don't think there's no kid. question about it. Just be a kid. They're forced to grow up. They're forced to grow up so soon. And then they get the posses and all kinds of cash. That's why you got a lot of spoiled guys out there, man. They forget where they came from sometimes. But the greatest athletes in the world are in the NBA. There's no doubt about it. No question. There's now man-to-man. -man. Duke wants to get a stop here. I don't want to get it to single digits on the other side. Wake Forest wants to get this to single digits. Gray lost the ball, but it is off Ewing's foot. And uh, speaking of the NBA, don't we all hope that Jason Williams, off that horrific motorcycle accident, makes it back to the uh, Chicago Bulls? His rehab, according to Mike Krzyzewski, is ahead, ahead of schedule, schedule yeah. but he still has a little problem with the nerve and the one foot. When you think of where he was that morning after that accident, he's come a long ways. Here's Reddick now off the pass. Two automatic, Brent. If he squares the body, as you look at Jason Williams, he's cheering. He's a cheerleader, one of the great point guards to play in the ACC. He was special, my friends. Final in 30 seconds. Now let's go back to that one timeout after Wake Forest made the run. Mike and got it back to single digits. Now remember the picture you saw of Mike Shashevsky on the sideline. He was Folks, like a general. He is an unbelievable coach, and he's a superb teacher. When you watch him in a practice, as I did yesterday, he bases his entire practice on fundamentals, and his assistant coaches are hands-on. Steve Wojciechowski and Chris Collins do a lot of the individual work for Coach K out on the floor. Now you see the man on the left. 
Now that is Johnny Dawkins and yesterday after practice coach K said to us he will probably replace me someday as the head coach here at Duke. That's how much he believes in his coaching staff. Well Johnny Dawkins I tell you you talk about class is just a class individual has had an opportunity his jersey hung up there was a national player of the year. Johnny Dawkins has had a lot of opportunities but he loves it down here. And Mike Krzyzewski to me though isn't going anywhere for a few years. He's only 56 years old. Exactly. He's not going anywhere. Anywhere. Just a granddad again, had twins. His little girl, his girl had twins. Showed me pictures before the game. So it looks like they're going to take a double digit lead to the locker room. Tap back. No. And that's going to do it. An 11 point a foul. lead. And Mike is unhappy. He wants he a foul, yeah. whistle and he wanted to shoot free throws. And he's telling Larry Rose about it. He now said, he says, Well, that's it. Forget about it. He's over the locker room. He said, It's my home court. You got to give me that call. It's my home court. As Coach K, Mr. Intensity. Now you can see here at the end as they brought it down with the final seconds ticking away, the penetrating move, and he thought there was contact. Didn't get the call. Clock runs out, and so Duke will take a 41 30 lead to the intermission here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, where the Blue Devils have won. 35 consecutive games and you would think folks they're well on their way to 36 stay tuned now Terry Gannon and Digger Phelps will be in the studio for the TGI Friday's halftime report after these messages. NCAA basketball on ABC Sports brought to you by Computer Associates focused on management software for over 25 years. The next Ford F-150 built Ford tough. And Miller Lite, there's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. We'll be back with the TGI Friday's halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. 41-30, the Duke Blue Devils with the lead, a classic showdown in the ACC. And hi, everybody, and welcome. Terry Gannon along with Digger Phelps. A busy day in college basketball. Doesn't get much better than Cameron Indoor Stadium with the ACC matchup that we have. But action elsewhere, including one of the unbeatens in college basketball, Pittsburgh taking on Rutgers. How good is Pitt? Pitt's for real, but you got to understand, Rutgers only lost by one to UConn at home. So let's see how they do today. At home, 36 in a row for the Panthers, but being tested today against Rutgers. The lead back and forth. There it is, 36 and counting. Carl Krauser on the fast break, finding Jerron Brown. 20 to 14, the lead for Pittsburgh. Just rarely make things happen. Confidence, confidence. A lot of balance in the first half. They weren't afraid. Attack played very aggressive. Pitt was struggling. Ricky Shields brought Rutgers back. They were up by four, but Chris Taft, the loose ball, dunking it home here, and it's 48 47. Chris Taft played real physical inside. The freshman, another double double today, but this game's not over early. Rutgers fading late, and it's Jerron Brown deep in the corner, putting it away for the Panthers. Well, this sets up that showdown now as Pittsburgh comes to play at UConn, number one in the country. Big battle on the Big East Monday night of the unbeaten. Yeah, I find out how good Pittsburgh is. 18-0 uh, at this point, but playing UConn. Stanford on a roll. They get Josh Childress back. Very solid team. Out-rebounding opponents by 10. St. Joseph Philly got a big test this afternoon at Xavier. We'll see how that turns out. Cincinnati averaging, uh, what, they're winning by 25 points per game in their 12 wins. Georgia and Kentucky, the SEC, Rashard right wide open for the three-pointer, 13-5 Georgia. Didn't come out ready to play. I think the Cats are struggling. They blew a 17-point lead the other night against Mississippi State. Their last home game, he had 23 turnovers, and watch today. Turnover itis again, bothers him. That's why Georgia's in, beginning in this first half. 18-9, so Tubby Smith looking for number 300, not liking that at all. Missouri and Oklahoma, Digger, two teams that really need to turn things around. Oklahoma with the two losses this past week. Well, that's Arthur Johnson, one of his few field goals. They shut him down, but Mizzou really struggling, especially trying to close games out. They blew a 14-4 lead against Syracuse at the end of the game. They let another 14-4 two-run go at Iowa State. They can't close games out. Oklahoma needs this win. They've lost their last two games by 58 points to UConn as well as to Oklahoma State. Missouri has lost five of their last seven, so they need a win for Quinn Snyder, too. Nebraska Alaska and Texas and it's the Longhorns coming off that upset over Wake number 16 up by four with 12 minutes left in the first half. What is up with Illinois? They get they, they have the five point lead but they're struggling again today. Well I went the first half shot 57 percent so no defense but on the other side of the coin Illinois misses 21 shots but only gets seven offensive rebounds. That's why that game was close. 
What about Duke and Wake now, second half? If you're in the uh, the locker room right now, what adjustments do you make? I think Coach K realizes you can't let Justin Gray get his game going because he is, I think, the one player that can break a game open for Wake Forest. But Duke's defense always shows up. And J.J. Redick on the outside, and you see what Williams can do on the inside. This is a very solid Duke team. It's going to be tough to win for Wake Forest in the second half. But there was a chance Wake was going to get blown out at one point in the first half. They came back. J.J. Redick heating up at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Back to the action in a bit. The TGI Fridays Halftime Report, brought to you by TGI Fridays. Visit today and try their new Atkins-approved menu. With a reminder that right after college hoops are done here on ABC, we've got NBA action coming your way for a GMC NBA hang time preview right now. We join Mike Tirico, George Carl, and Tom Tolbert from Times Square Stadium in New York. Guys? All right, Terry, thank you. After college basketball, it's the NBA, but a couple of stars on each team, Minnesota and Houston, who didn't go to college. Kevin Garnett right from high school in Chicago to uh, Minnesota. No playoff wins, but a lot of success thus far, George. Well, right now, from my, my standpoint, from a coach's standpoint, he is special. He plays intense and complete basketball game at both ends of the court. Defensively, he's a leader. Offensively, he's a leader. He's a guy that plays playoff basketball over the 82-game regular season, and right now is leading Minnesota to, I think, the surprise great team in the NBA. That's a good point. Minnesota is ahead of San Antonio, the defending champs in the Midwest Division. San Antonio has just come off a great stretch, even though they've lost their last three games. Houston's in the middle of the pack. Coaching change from Rudy Tom Janovich to Jeff Van Gundy. Van Gundy coached Patrick Ewing here in New York. Now he's coaching Yao Ming in Houston. Well, I think what Jeff Van Gundy's trying to do is make Yao Ming the focal point both offensively and defensively. Now, defensively, this is a tough guy to shoot over. In fact, I don't even know why you try it. Look at this. Yao. Yo. Yao. Yo. That is nice. And then offensively, if you get him inside his scoring range, I mean, it's almost impossible to stop. At 7-5, he can turn around. He has a sweet stroke out to about 19 feet. Yep, and those scoring guards and Coutinho Mobley and Steve mm -hmm. Francis working with him. It's a big weekend of the NBA on ABC. We have a game tomorrow, but a game on Saturday afternoon. So stay with us right after the college hoop action. You will see Houston and Minnesota. Our coverage begins with GMC NBA hang time coming up as soon as you guys are done today. So Terry, we'll see you in a little bit from Times Square in New York. All right, Mike, thank you very much. So we look forward to the T-Wolves and the Rockets coming up later. But first, college basketball continues here on ABC Sports. This has been the TGI Fridays Halftime Report, brought to you by TGI Fridays. Visit today and try their new Atkins-approved menu. We'll be back with the second half after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Cameron Indoor Stadium ready for the second half underway. The Duke Blue Devils with the first possession. Duhon brings it across the timeline and puts it in Reddick's hands. He's the leading scorer at 11 in the first half, but it was great balance by Duke again, and that's been the story of their year, especially in those last 10 games with a margin over 26 a game. Off the pump fake, Ewing hits the first shot of the second half. I'll tell you, nothing like having guys on a perimeter can make shots. It hides a lot of liabilities. And that's one of the great pluses over the years with Duke, having excellent perimeter shooters. Ball was covered up brilliantly by Duhon, who's done an excellent job on him. Stripping shot is blocked off the drive. We take a look, Dick, at our first half numbers. I tell you, a number that we don't see up there, but we see, oh, yes, we do. We see the blocks by Duke. But Mr. Williams had six blocks, nine as a team, averaging 7.1. School record, 6.3. That record could go this year. Gray misses, but pushing. Called as they go for the rebound underneath. Ewing had what he thought was favorable rebounding position, but he pushed a little bit too hard. Hey, Brent, the next four minutes here, I think, are vital to Wake Forest. They have to get a spurt of some kind. So many times we talk about how significant it is the first four minutes after the half, and especially when you're down 13 and you're on a roll against a team that's won 35 in a row at home. 
There's Gray knocking down the three, and that'll get him back into this game in a hurry. He has nine points so far, so he has been their leading three ball shooter here in this game. He's now three of five. And we expect that from him. He made eight in the last game. Former Ruby of Carmelo Anthony at Oak Hill Academy in Virginia. You know, my partner, Dick Vitale, was talking about the uh, about the great balance and, and when you take a look at this at this Duke team we've raved about their defense in the first half Dick you've talked about balance the one thing they might not have maybe if you get them into a real tight game the go to guy when you got to have a basket well you know you talk about a star player the great superstars they've had in the past they always had that kind of player uh -huh. with a Jason Williams certainly a Grant Hill during that era when they won the back to back times Christian Leitner was special but I think Reddick can make shots in the first time I really do and I think Duhon has improved so much on the perimeter Williams comes back Dick let me ask you about Reddick late in the game can he create off the dribble against intense pressure? Let's say it was Connecticut and Duke on a neutral site in the NCAA tournament. Can he do it? You try to set up a national championship game already, Connecticut yeah, and Duke. I just said neutral yeah. site. We'll have Connecticut and Duke, <laughs> men's and women's. I'll tell you right now, I really believe with the way they screen, they can get him free. Can he do it on his own? No, that's not his forte. He is not that kind of player. I'll tell you, after practice, uh, Mike thought that maybe Ding was a little too unselfish, and they're wondering if maybe he won't step up. Ray battled for the field goal. Underneath, Levy comes away, and Ray Forrest missed an opportunity that time. Mike told me he's asked so much of Ding earlier, and he's sort of backed off now. Later. Yes. Four on one. You got to score here now. That's a good foul. That's a good foul. Four on one. Looks like a sure layup, and they're going to have to go to the free throw line to earn points. That's their coaching staff, Dawkins and Wojciechowski, outstanding guards. And right here, there's the foul by Reddick. Not that I'm saying Wojo was in the class of Johnny Dawkins as a player, because Johnny was player of the year, but Wojo was certainly an outstanding player. Chris Collins waited to right. His daddy certainly does a great job in basketball. Bob Collins. Now, you know, uh, oh, Paul. Oh, a little bump right there. Brian rushed into Reddick oh, and then his offered hand. his hand and Reddick oh, walked away from it. JJ, you got to shake his hand. Come on, he's the mayor of Winston Salem. Shake the kid's hand. He's a diaper dandy. Come on, JJ Reddick. Duhon across the timeline, 43-35. These kids don't go to, I tell you, you can't knock them out. They just keep battling the Demon Deacons. They got the screaming Deacons down here at Wake Forest. It's so tough to beat them. Beautiful school, great academic school. He's had some outstanding players over the years. That's the loss against Texas. That's a really loss. Ray had 27. Got really dominated on the glass. And this afternoon, they've been beaten on the glass as well. Used that head fake, ball fake really well. Ding steps out. Gets a screen. Gets inside now. Folks, that could be the go-to guy right there. That was pretty. Great footwork right there. Really outstanding footwork for the diaper dandy. Williams definitely a go-to guy for the Demon Deacons down low, using his muscle. They just don't back away. Every time you make a big basket, they come right at you. Need is eight. Early rebound, certainly the total goes to Duke by a plus eight. They were minus 14 against Texas. That's not normally what Wake Forest is about. Led the nation last year, we matter. And Josh Howard, you took about a complete player, getting a lot of minutes now with the Dallas Mavericks. Look at Dick's Dick, I think we have found it. I mean, that was wonderful the way he backed his way in that time, just didn't score. He played soccer until he was 12 years old. Paul on the drive. Williams picks down the offensive rebound against the triple team. He's got Paul on the other side for the layup. Paul gets the layup on the inside. They find him off the double team. You know, you mentioned soccer. They say he was a better, so better soccer player than he was a basketball player as a youngster. And Paul, uh, he was run right over. Coming back on defense. A lot of contact out there. Ewing's open. This is the three. Tap, wakes ball. Here comes the freshman. 
Nice pass. Looking for the three. Got it. Great recognition by Paul. He hit Gray. 14 for Gray. Wake is within three. Great look. Great look. Anticipation. Tremendous job in transition by the diaper dandy. Paul, one of the leading assist men. Oh, he ran him down. He ran him down. Incidental contact, they said. NCAA Basketball on ABC Sports brought to you by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard and McDonald's. Duke's biggest lead in the first half, 13 points. They were up 11 at the intermission, and Gray has eight of Wake's 12 points here in the second half. So Digger Phelps mentioned that he was the purest shooter on this team when he was talking to Terry Gannon, and he has fired the Deacons back into the game here, Dick. Yeah, we had mentioned earlier he's going to have to find that three for them to get in the game, and certainly Paul has done an excellent job distributing the ball. After the timeout, it's Ewing. Netting the three, he has 13 for the Blue Devils. Well, Ewing letting the three ball fly like Terry Gannon used to do when they played for an elite buddy of ours, Jimmy V. Duke up six. We'll take a timeout. Hey, Brad, it's so important on a basketball court to have court awareness, to know where people are. We're going to watch right now how four people freeze it. Look at four guys. That means somebody's going to be open, and right about here, he's going to find an open guy. Mr. Paul is going to be the beneficiary and get himself an easy layup because four guys were all around Eric Williams. There's Gray handling the ball. Ewing's all over him. Back screen. Beautiful back screen, Dick, that time. And Jamal Levy, the 6'9 junior. One of their best rebounders put it down. Eight for the game for Levy. Levy with that cut off the back screen. A poor job by Duke. A lot of people don't communicate well on back screen. Back screens are so difficult to defend, especially when they come from the help side. Levy's the only player saddled with three fouls. Uh, quite a few with two, but Levy is the only player who has three with 14.58 to go. Strickland picks up the foul. With Get out high against Reddick that time. Alert Marge, a big Monday on ESPN. Highlighted by two great games here. Pittsburgh at Connecticut. You saw the highlights at the intermission. Pittsburgh goes in undefeated to Stores. And then Oklahoma against Texas Tech. Shot is missed, but Williams comes down with the rebound and a putback for Sheldon. the Blue Devils. Sheldon Williams on the inside. Hey, Brent, there's only four run beacons in college basketball. Pittsburgh, one of them with St. Joe's, Cincinnati, and Stanford. Where do you see Cincinnati? Bobby Huggins' club is for real. All the freshman sticks right with it, even though Ding was on him. Nice try. There's Williams down with the offensive rebound. The muscle back, no. He wanted a foul on the inside. The big guy's got to give it up. Oh, does Ding handle the ball for a big guy? Oh, oh, let it go. Oh, 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 side. Oh, but, oh, folks, that oh, is something. Watching 6'8 uh -oh. freshman Luol Ding put it on the floor. Puts it on the floor, but a wide open J.J. Reddick. Mr. Busburger, you never leave him open. I never, ever leave him open. Don't ever even think about leaving him open. You can't leave that kid open, Mr. Busburger. Well, you're between a rock and a hard place. If a 6'8 guy comes down who can handle like that, Dick, <laughs> you can hardly get off of him and chase somebody after That's the three ball. No question. He spotted up. They run the transition game. They run Reddick for the three. They feel that's as easy as getting a deuce. So go with the three. Now it's Reddick jumping on Gray. He fires the three anyway. Put back, knocked away from Levy. Reddick's got it. Foul Reddick. I want you to watch this, folks. Here's the young man from the Sudan, moved to London, then came to Blair, New Jersey. Now he is here in Durham. What a basketball future he has at 6'8", baby. He really can handle it. They love his versatility. Now there's Ewing going to find his sidekick, his buddy. Look at him wide, wide open, squares the body. What a clinic he could put on shooting the jump shot. The anatomy of the shot. The kid has a perfect release. 
Luau Deng is special. He was a great soccer player. And what it makes him even more special, he's a beautiful, beautiful young guy. Fifty-three, forty-four. Duke ahead. You know, the foul you got, is called. Uh, you know, we've had Kyle Visser out there, the six-eleven freshman for Wake Forest, number fifty-five, and I think six is the key number because uh, Coach Prosser wanted a little more size down there. You know, Brant, when you think about, it, most teams would have weathered, would not have weathered the storm that Duke laid on them early in this game. That shows you a lot about this basketball team that they've been able to hang Wake Forest because I'm telling you. They're meeting Duke at a time when Duke is focused and is ready to play with a lot of intensity and emotion, especially defensively. Coach K approached this like an NCAA tournament. A turnaround from a Thursday night game to Saturday afternoon, and Redding knocks down the three ball again. Did he, Just like that, they're back to 11. Did he flat out shoot it? I'm telling you, have you seen a better shooter? I, I haven't seen any since Mullen, man. Name me one better shooter than that in college over the last 25 years. I haven't seen him. I'm not saying player. I'm saying shooter. I want to make that very clear. I am. I mean, are you kidding me? Look at the follow through. He knows it's going down. It feels good. First time I heard about him, Brent, he was a sophomore. Howard Garfinkel tells me, he said, Dick, we got a kid of my kid. I'm telling you, it's automatic when he lets it go. That's just great wrist action, isn't it, Dick, when oh, you were talking about the follow through? Remember Rick Mount years ago at sure Purdue? Do, Purdue? Wow, that was a big time shooter. Knocked away from Gray and out of bounds. Wake ball. Down 11 again. That was the, the margin at the intermission. Biggest lead in the first half for Coach K's Blue Devils was 13. Coach K coaches like it's his first game. The same with a Roy Williams, a Gary Williams. This league is now lo loaded with marquee coaches. Nice ball reversal. <laughs> And the three ball is fired up by Teron Downey, a 6'2 junior, who uh, he's quite a story because eight days before their season opener, he had to win an emergency appendectomy. Yep. Came back and played and got 20 points and sparked into a win over John Calabari's team, who signed a long term extension, which we had announced during that game that would happen. Williams has it knocked away by Wake. Great ball reversal in that last possession by Wake Forest. I mean, every game in this conference this year, Brent, is going to be special. I mean, Georgia Tech's got a date today with Maryland. Next week, it's Maryland playing on, saying welcome to the Comcast, to the Dukies. Remember last year, they went in as number one in America. You and I did the game and lost to Maryland. Maryland, incidentally, is the last team to win here at Cameron. And that was February 27th, 2001. Duke, since then, has run off 35 consecutive victories at home now dick if you take a look around the acc this is a conference of sophomores man they're all over the place nick Kaner medley's really approving i love everybody loves raymond you gotta like mr may on the inside mccants is a high riser reddick can flat out shoot it Sheldon Williams is power on the interior. Justin Gray is an area code jump shooter. Eric Williams, a man on the interior. Jared Jack is an outstanding point guard. And today we take a look at some of the Super Souths. Mr. Gray, nothing but nylon. And then we're going to watch Mr. Williams on the interior. And now we're going to watch Sheldon Williams with the drop step inside. And of course, the star of them all, the Super South, J.J. Reddick. Well, you know, last season here at Duke, they rebuilt this team around four freshmen. And so there's the young man again, Ding. 26 and 7 last year with those freshmen, lost to Kansas, and Roy Williams in the Sweet 16. Paul muscling through. Nice drive by the little guy. What a special player. He's going to be in that weight uniform. Last year won the first ACC regular season title since your buddy Billy Packer and Lenny Chapel did it back in 62. The one thing about this weight team is nice they pass. have not quit. You know, it's, it's remarkable it's watching the job that Prosser has done in coaching this game, coming off their first loss last Tuesday night. So it was an angry Demon Deacon team coming in here, down 13 in the first half, down 11 at the intermission, and they just battle their way back in the game. And Justin Gray now, unfortunately for Wake, has picked up his fourth personal. So take a seat. Strickland 
Oh, it comes on to the floor. The lead is nine, 12 minutes to go. But uh, Duke, unlike North Carolina State, Wake Forest is not going away. They're oh. showing great heart in this game. I, I just was very disappointed in North Carolina State the other game. I thought they'd hang in there for a while. I did too. Did. Their talent level is a lot better than what they performed here in that game. And they seem to have backed away from the Dukies in that contest rather than just battle and battle and battle. I know Hodge was really struggling, and he's a really talented player. Ewing losing it on the drive, but it was knocked out of bounds by Wake. We'll take a break now. Duke 58, Wake 49. The NCAA basketball on ABC will continue after this message and word from our ABC stations. And by sundown tonight, there will be only one unbeaten team in the ACC, either Wake Forest or Duke. You can see at the top, NC State having suffered its first loss here on Thursday night. Georgia Tech has already lost. Maryland's been beaten. North Carolina has dropped two games. And now this well-balanced Duke offense goes back to work again. And that is 19 points for J.J. Redick. They're getting Redick open. you got to really shadow him. you got to find him. You can't let him square his body, Brent. Earlier this year, he was having a tough time getting free for that jump shot. Purdue shut him down big time. Great defensive stopper. they got to give it him a low. Purdue. Gene Teddy won his 500 the other day. All off the drive, and the foul goes against Duke that time. You know, we have talked about balance. And uh, six players averaging nine points a game for Duke. And 11 of 15 games, now that counts today, Duke has had at least four double-digit scores. Now, that's the good news. The bad news for Coach K is, if you look at his bench, he doesn't have a single point off his bench here today. He doesn't go to the bench at all. He's one of those coaches that believes in playing players a lot of minutes. He's done that over the years. Sometimes I think we overdo the depth, the depth, the depth. The bottom line is kids want to play. Take a look at the bench scoring. You anticipate that. We goes to the bench a little more. What a great defense. Got it in Give the it up. Hands. Give it up. He says, no, I'm not giving it up. I'm taking it to the goal. He had Duhon for a layup. This could be a season high performance for him. He's at 21 right now. You know, the high this year has been like 23. Listen to the crowd, baby. What a six man. There's a bench for you. The Duke crowd is a bench. They are a bench. Tough to deal with. Watch Dockery. Look at Mr. Ball get his pocket. Stripped right there. Now look, look at right now, Mr. Reddit. Head up, head up. Defense comes to him. He doesn't get a chance to see Duhon, but he does convert. Look at the intensity. Look at the intensity. I love you, Sean. You made that happen. So J.J. Redding leading the way. A picture-perfect stroke, Brent. Look at him spotting up, running to that trifecta line. Oh, does he love the three, baby? It's a little three ball down here in Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke's biggest lead, 14. 10.55 left in the game. And does Wake have it in one more time to come back? And cut it to three. No, a little defense. Downey's having trouble out on the point. Suffocating. Let it go again. He missed one. He's human. Picked up by Wake. Strickland attacks. Through the foul, he'll shoot a ball. Nice drive by Strickland. Sliding and gliding. Here's the number for you to blow your mind. When you think about the ACC, the only coach to win more league games in their first two years than Skip Rosser. No, his name is not Dean Smith. It's Bill Guthridge. 22 wins by Mr. Prosser in his first two years. He's going for his seventh consecutive 20-game win season. No, he's going for his eighth. He's had seven already. He's had seven. They're going to be tough to deal with down at Wake. Trust yeah. me. They are going to be tough to deal with at home. What a win this would be, though, if Wake would ever come back and win. To early in the season have victories at North Carolina, Duke would be amazing. But right now, 14 down. And missing a pair of free throws. Yes, sir. It's going to be tough. That three-point shot will just change the complexion of the game. Look at him running into screens. Charged by Reddick. 
And that is his fourth foul of the game. And that will signal Ewing up off the bench. And a reminder now, next Saturday, the Winter X Games at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific. That is snowboard slope style. Women's skiing next Saturday. We'll take you to Aspen, Colorado. There's a note here that Sports Center will report live from Aspen on Monday, January 26th, and Tuesday, January 27th. Now that's duty. You get to go from Bristol to Aspen. Huh? Wow. That's not wow. bad. It's not a bad journey, huh? No. You know, I've never been to Aspen. Bring money. <laughs> down he puts it down. Here's Strickland. Levy on the other side, he's got a good rebounder. And underneath. Put it down. And he'll shoot now for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. He was really working on the inside, really tough. You mentioned going from Aspen from Bristol. Look at Strickland on the inside. Now we're going to watch Levy. He's just working on the interior. Comes up with the loose ball. Slides and glides and converts. Linda Cohn is getting that assignment. One of my favorite ladies. I had Robin Roberts, his nephew, the other day. Lawrence Roberts. She had told me a long time. She had said, long time ago, Dickie V, someday you will talk about my nephew. And oh, was Robin right. Now Robin, a big star with Good Morning America on ABC. So Levy injured on the play. They can substitute. And free throw Paul shoot. will shoot the free throw. It's so beautiful to have a young guy like Chris Paul who comes in. He fits in with everyone. Doesn't come in with a big head. He's a great team player. Very unselfish. Phenomenal attitude. Looks you in the eye when he speaks to you. I mean class never ready his family what 60 season tickets and they sit together down there at the weight games they got t-shirts great love in that family Williams with a nifty save at the end line was able to get it off the weight player and out of bounds so Dehorn will take the ball at 956 and uh, Wake throws a little pressure at it next three minutes are vital for Wake Forest they got to come up with a spurt down 12, they got to find a way with their defense to create some offensive opportunities off their defense. And number Reddick is on the bench with four fouls in this game. He has led the way offensively for the Blue Devils at 21. Go to Williams inside, slide him to the post and get. There they were, but they turn it over. That was the look, though. That was the look. You can feel it up here. Away from the ball, it goes against. Danilus. Again, Danilus back it in on Williams on the other end. Danilus right now, haven't seen him last year. He's not as fluid, and you can see that that ankle sprain, and certainly all the time he's missed, has hurt. Oh, look at the bet. football pass. He made like Peyton Manning letting one fly. By the way, who wins that, baby? A tough, tough game, huh? Peyton against uh, Coach Belichick and that, that New England defense up there. Cold weather. I guess you have to like uh, the home team a little bit because of the weather situation. But uh, underdogs last week were like 4-0, and oh, and Peyton Manning has just been on a remarkable roll. Has anybody seen a quarterback any hotter in the playoffs? I guess uh, we have wow. to go back to what, Joe Montana and Steve Young? I mean, it's been unbelievable performance. How about you, who do you like? New England and Philadelphia. Donovan McNabb will go to the Super Bowl, Number and five. he will hook up with Peyton Manning. They're gonna find a way. Tony Dungy, one of the classiest guys. You gotta root for Dungy. He represents everything that's good about a person in a coaching profession. Yeah, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. Great guy. I'm into that. He's good basketball player back when he grew up as a kid in the state of Michigan. 65 51. I'll tell you though, Dick, do not count out Carolina. They, they just kind of have that little look about them. They've been able to, uh, but anyway, back to basketball. <laughs> 65 51. You played a little combination here. Soft man to man. Try to disguise a little. They're playing man. Gray on the pull up. Almost gave a look as a matchup, but it was a man to man, but just a little soft, not their normal pressure on the ball. Starting to get into a time in his game where Duke loves having the lead and then go to a 2 3 foul line extended set. Tough to defend. Double up, he's got to find the open man. There he is. 
Smart, manage the clock. You're up 14. Got to have good basketball IQ. Knocked away from Williams. And Wake comes up with it. Duke is back defensively. They did not give Downey a layup, but uh, Duhon fouled it. Good job of getting back on a defensive end in transition. That's a must today. For example, you got North Carolina playing Connecticut. You better be able to get back, and both those teams really do a great job of getting out in transition. So the team that gets back defensively and makes it five on five is going to have a great chance to win that game. I think North Carolina's going to be very difficult to beat at home. I really believe that. Their starting five is dynamite. One and one. So the left-hander at the free throw line. Excellent free throw shooter. His career better than 82%. Another kid with a positive attitude. And just understands. Like, for example, he goes to the bench. Not going to start. Doesn't affect him. He knows he's going to get minutes. Realizes that we're going to try to go for a little bit more size. Starting strictly. Duke's advantage is a dozen. Half court trap. Got the steal. Give it up. Two. He was all alone, Dick. He could roll in that time. So uh, Vitas Danilus out of Lithuania just took it on in for the easy lay. Down at 10. They got to get it to single digits. Let's say about a seven minute mark to get a little psychologically get the. They're going to go to a half court trap. You can pay for this, but you got to flash to the ball. That's what you got to do. Flash to the ball. And Ewing nails the three ball. Team. Great coaching against the half court trap. Flash somebody to the post area. He stepped out the three point range, which was wide open. Dockery, an athlete who's had a lot of trouble getting minutes because of the quality of the starting five, but he's shown us something here. And wait till they bring in Sean Livingston next year at the point. Where do you see this kid from out of Illinois? I saw some highlights of him. Wow, is he for real? Out of Peoria, they were crushed at Illinois. They decided to leave the state. Oh. Too high. Not a good looking shot, was no. it? And they were also bringing in a kid from California who could score the Marcus <laughs> Nelson and David McClure from out of Connecticut. So the beat goes on for the Dukies. Or the rich get richer, folks. I'm out. NCAA basketball on ABC Sports brought to you by Samuel Adams. When you're ready for a distinctive brew, Samuel Adams, always a good decision. Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. And Microsoft, your potential, our passion. J.J. Reddick back in the lineup for Duke. The leading scorer here today for the Devils with 21. Comes back with four personal fouls, seven minutes to go, and Duke up 13. They've won 35 consecutive games here. Mike Krzyzewski has won 603 games. Levy on the inside has it rejected by Williams. He's becoming a shot blocking machine on the interior. Yanks away the Eric Williams miss and. Uh, a little bit of pain as he goes down. They put the rush to his aid. He's got eight block shots already today. Eight block shots. Played with D'Angelo Alexander in high school. There's one of the eight. Great timing. He's only a second year player, getting better and better with the minutes. Mike Krzyzewski told me before the game, I'd like to get him a game where he can play 30, 35 minutes and not get in foul trouble. A lot of silly fouls. I mean, his numbers are basically numbers are based on about 20 minutes of action. He's also pulled down 11 rebounds in this game, so he's been extremely active on the glass. One of the differences, one of the reasons why Duke enjoys this lead. I got to make a little run here. Need a spurt. Need some threes. Downey certainly can knock him down. Here's the main man, Gray. He can't get any daylight on you. Double up in the post. 
Ding putting it down again. Finds Reddick. Reddick to the glass, and he's fouled. He comes to the free throw line for a pair, and if he makes them both, then he's the favorite. He'd be sitting on a 23. You know, he sits at 23, and that would be the high for the year. J.J. had 22 against Texas is the high. Well, Sidney Bristow can't remember what happened for the last two years of her life, so tomorrow everything will finally be revealed on a new alias. Tomorrow at 9, 8 Central here on ABC. And what are the odds of making this to him? <laughs> what are the odds of making these two? He missed one today, folks. If he just joined us late, he made 54 in a row to set a new ACC record and then missed one, and now he's on another streak. He's the purest shooter, and I'll say that again, that I have seen since Chris Mullen. He's not the greatest player, but he's the purest shooter. Some Steve. of you don't remember Chris Mullen. He led St. John's to a Final Four one year. He, was, uh, he used to have a key to the gym, played up at St. John's. He was a legendary player. I think someday he'll probably run of the Golden State Warriors the way it looks. He's an excellent front office guy in the NBA now. He the left-hander had a wonderful score. He already announced he's not interested in his alma mater's coaching vacancy. They should give that job right now. I could give it to a great kid. He will have New York jumping with joy. Bobby Gonzalez from out of Manhattan is ready for that job, my friends. He is coached in the ACC. He understands the city. He understands the AAU competition, the high school ranks, and he would get players, and St. John's would have the garden rocking again. Case closed. Speaking of young coaches, Skip Prosser has a son, Mark, who's coaching over on the Bucknell staff. And a reminder that uh, coming up next, of course, the GMC NBA hang time, and followed by Minnesota Houston. We have NBA today, and then tomorrow, the San Antonio Spurs are at the Boston Celtics. I'll tell you one thing you talk about that Houston team. You're going to like Mr. Francis, certainly, and Kevin Garnett. You talk about a do it all, an automatic double double guy. Timeout is called. Time out. In that trapping area, you got to find that open. You got to find that opening right up there in that three second area or at the high post area. When you face that trap, you got to be aware of it. They were prepared today in terms of preparation on their blackboard with all the defenses they may see from Skip Ross. And take a look right now. You're going to attack this trap. Now, watch what happens when you get into a trapping area. Hold it, freeze it. See, here comes the double up. Look at this open area. Here's where you want to slide somebody into this area here. And watch, do They read it perfectly. And here comes Mr. Yafrizen. Right there. Mango. Count it. Nothing but nylon. Right into the open area. It's like a clinic. I feel I want to get back coaching. Hey, everybody else is getting back out there. I mean, look at these guys at the ages. Jack McKean and UB Brown. Give me a job. Brown, I want exactly. some of that cash. Yeah, exactly. When you pay millions, you can get anybody to come back and coach. I go there and coach and hire you as my assistant. Look at that Duke defense. So give me the next job. You get to Lenny Wilkins. Give me a shot. Oh, uh, you can't win and come back when you allow that to happen. You allow that to happen, a wide open lane. I could have went through there and made that layup. Ray is fouled by Ewing. As you said earlier, it's said so well. Mike Krzyzewski treated these last 48 hours basically like an NCAA tournament on a Thursday and a Saturday. He's always thinking in a way of motivating. Always coming up. I mean, it's really special. You want to talk about teachers, and he learned from Justin as good a Gray. teacher as you're going to He's find in Bobby Knight. If you go to a practice session down here at Texas Tech, you talk about a clinic that he puts on and teaching the game. It's incredible. Gray knocks down the free throw. I know people in Indiana don't like to hear this, but I see out there Coach K. Court, Bobby Kremens down here at Georgia Tech, Lute Olson. I've said it, Brent. Forget about all the nonsense. If everybody else is getting courts named after him, Bobby Knight, for what he did at Indiana, she should name the building the Assembly Hall slash Robert Montgomery Knight Center. Get some class down here, some of those administrators, and stop being so immature. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful two-man play coming down into the paint. As Williams wide open. I think you're putting this one in a Duke book for a W, Mr. Musburger. You're getting ready to talk about the Celtics tomorrow. I saw Red Arback the other day after the game with 
Maryland. Looks so great talking to him about basketball. He's there with John Feinstein. John's going to be doing a book about having lunch with Red on a regular basis. Hope he got Red to pick up the check. Hey, there's Danny Edge. Come on, Danny. Smile. As a double up. Spot the open man. Look at Duhon. Head up. Sheldon Williams with the finish. What's making Duke so much better now is they're starting to get inside play from Williams and Randolph to go with that great perimeter game. I think the best backcourt in America, and I wish you get a chance to see them, is Jameer Nelson and Delante West of St. Joe's. But I think, obviously, the deepest and best backcourt in America is Duke. They got five guys that can rotate in that perimeter. The lead is 14. Five minutes to go. There is no margin of error now for Wake Forest. Like zero. They better make every possession count. There's Duke taking some time off the clock. They're going to go to that 2 3 set. Spread the court. There they are spreading the court. There's the double up. Reverse the ball. Here they come. Downey. Nice play by Downey stepping into the pass and a poor job by Duke in that they didn't step to the basketball. For all you young kids out there, understand you got to step to the ball. You can't wait for the ball to come to you. So it's Leads a double dozen. You don't want to get too cautious. If they got the open opportunity, you got to take it. Duhon the senior. He's been sensational this year. Absolutely sensational. Chris Duhon has played as well as most point guards in America. He has been absolutely dynamite in his senior year. He's spinning, whirling, going down the lane, taking the ball strong to the basket. home winning streaks. Pittsburgh leads the nation with 37. Duke at 35. Creighton at 25. Wake Forest has 24 in a row. And Texas, who just beat Wake, has 24 in a row. And the biggest crowd up there in Texas in the history of their basketball against Wake. Duke is up 14. Play on the drive. Traveling call. Larry Rose with the call. Stephen That's Dinkins. a big traveling call, and Skip is up and not happy. Three fifty-eight left. Duke closing in on thirty-six in a row at home. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television with Dick Vitale. I'm Brent Musburger. Coming up, the GMC NBA hang time, followed by Minnesota, the Timberwolves against Houston and Yao Ming. And here, Duke leading Wake Forest 76 to 62. Got numbers, got numbers. That means Layup City, Layup City. They execute so well, put the ball in the hands of Duhon, and he will find the open man and have the Cameron Crazies jump with joy. Now, J.J. Redick, he had his best shooting performance of the season. 23 is his high. Sheldon Williams, though, has done the little things. There he is defensively. His call. But Sheldon Williams in this game has 15 points, but listen to these two numbers. 12 rebounds and eight blocked shots for Sheldon Williams. So he, he did the dirty work for Coach K underneath. And then, of course, uh, out on top, J.J. Reddick. And uh, Ewing, Dick, as you pointed out, he had a big three when Wake was making its last run. Well, you know, Sheldon Williams is going for a triple double here in a very unique way, certainly when you think about block shots. But he's one of the improved players in America. Jason Maxiel has really improved down here in Cincinnati. As you said earlier, some kids need a year or two to just get adjusted to making that transition to the collegiate level before they can really start to find their game. And with each game you watch Sheldon Williams, you see him getting better and better and better. He's going to lay up here. No, they back it out. They want to take time off the clock. Smart play. Smart play by Ewing, good basketball IQ, managed the clock. So there's a lot of national media, not just here, but in the area. The North Carolina-Connecticut game, and uh, you 
can see the uh, the overhead photos being taken of this game and the photographers, of course, at court side. So this one is so well covered. Taking your picture. They were taking your picture before the game. Man, you and I took a lot of pictures today. You just get that horse ready for me when I come to Montana, my friend. <laughs> I'm going to ride that sucker. Like, I'm telling you. Mike Krzyzewski, not a happy camper today before the game. I said, look, I don't make the schedule. He's not a happy camper. This is their only Saturday afternoon game this year. He said, basketball belongs on Saturday afternoon in the ACC, and we got loads of 9 o'clock games. He's starting to sound like the general, but you know what? He's right. Saturday afternoon is a great time for college basketball. Look at that coaching staff. So much pride. And wearing the uniform here and extends to the players with Will Joe and Chris Collins and Johnny Dawkins. They know what tradition is having played here. And Williams going for another rebound and couldn't get the handle out of bounds. Well, the one number that the coaches, Coach K and his staff, are going to enjoy looking at is that Wake Forest shot a season low 35% from the field here this afternoon. And they've held Wake down into the 60s. They put 80 up, still three minutes to go. Wait, perhaps we'll climb up into the 70s here, but it has been tough going, just getting daylight for Wake Forest. And Paul is learning how tough it is for a freshman to come in here at the point and get it done as Williams yanks it away again, and he is fouled by the freshman. Well, the stabilizer for Duke all year has been their defensive game. They suffocate you on a defensive end. It's going to be interesting how that defense exists against the deep and talented young Maryland team up there at the Comcast Center with the Red Army cheering. So Chris Paul fouls out of the game in his first trip to Cameron. He scored seven points here today, but there will be other games for the freshman. Part of the learning process is coming in here, but uh, Coach Kane knew that it was going to be very, very difficult for a freshman to run the point against his defense in this building. They were much more concerned in practice yesterday with Eric Williams down low than they were with Paul's speed. Mike told us that uh, he felt he certainly had enough speed to get back on defense against Paul. He did at no time. At no time did Paul take charge offensively in this game. So he still has a lot to learn in the ACC. Well, you know, you got to credit that to the four-year experience of du Duan defensively at that point. Duan also met the challenge of playing Hodge the other night and really did a great job against him. Nothing like that incredible experience. You know, you talk about nine Final Fours, unbelievable. The most are Wooden with 12. The Wizard of Westwood and Dean Michelangelo had 11. Incredible, though, that he's taken his program, especially after his early start, winning only 38 games in three years. I'll tell you one thing, Brent. This is a question I'll ask you. You've been around all sports. With the climate that exists now, with the win-now mentality, I wonder in today's climate with 38 wins in three years here, would he have survived that years, you know, now versus years ago? I think it depends on what they're replacing when they come in. Well, he replaced, they're they were coming, in the Final Four at 78. Then it would right be very that. difficult. But if you're coming into a program that has not experienced success, then they'll live with you for a while. But a school like Nebraska, which you mentioned earlier in the game, they had so much success that they were spoiled and there was no way they were going to sit there when they were not recruiting the kind of players that were winding up in Oklahoma and Texas. And that's what happened out at Lincoln. Well, you know, my point is this. If you're going to make that change and the ball goes out of bounds at Lincoln, Nebraska, like they did, you've got to hit a grand slam. And I have nothing against Mr. Callahan. I don't know him at all. But to me, they seem like they were just searching for a coach, getting rejected by everyone. And it was unbelievable. But, you know, when he came here, Mike Krzyzewski, he stepped in. They didn't win. They didn't go right from the Final Four to Mike Krzyzewski. There was a year or two between that. But it was basketball was in pretty good shape. I do. Well, you take a look at his recent record. Six great Sweet 16s. Three years ago, the championship. Duhon, of course, was a starter as a freshman on a national championship team here. His you know, overall, Mike Krzyzewski's overall tournament record is 60 and 16, folks. 78 percent as uh, Sheldon Williams line here today is wow. just absolutely remarkable. He filled up the stat sheet, man. That's a that's almost a triple double, my yes, sir. Great job this afternoon for Sheldon Williams. You know, you mentioned six consecutive Sweet 16s. Most schools would proudly put that out there and sell that to you. He said, "We're not about Sweet 16s, man. We're about cutting nuts down."
You know, the last time a triple double was turned in by a Duke player, I looked at it the other day, and you've got to go back to 1978. And Gene Banks. Wow. He was a former legend here. He did it against Lehigh, 13, 12, and 11. So that is how close Sheldon Williams came today to be for becoming the first Duke player to turn in a triple double. You got to go back to 1970. An opponent, you go to the year previous to 78, to 1977. Tree Rollins Tree with Rollins Clemson, Clemson went 16, 15, and the tree had 10 block shots. You know, it doesn't shock you at all, though, because Duke is so balanced as a team that you're going to have everybody sharing the wealth that you're not going to have one individual piling up those kind of numbers, like in 91 and 92 when they had the big three with Bob Hurley, certainly one of the great point guards ever, ever to play the game, and then hooking up with Grant Hill and Christian Lake. Again, we go back on the drive. Nice drive Coming by right Donovan. on through by Teron that time. We go back, this will make it an 11-game winning streak for the Blue Devils since their loss in the final of the Great Alaska Shootout. They were beaten by Purdue 78 to 68. And uh, Mike told us yesterday, we did shoot a lick in that game. He said, we just never had a chance. And the Boilermakers, on the other hand, played very, very well. This would give them an 11-game winning streak since then. But the margin's unbelievable as Randolph puts it down. Shout like Randolph up. Schoolboy legend from nearby Raleigh. A 6'10 sophomore putting it away and now 119 and the numbers will start to mount again. This will be the 36th consecutive victory here in Cameron Indoor Stadium. This team undoubtedly will rise to number one if, 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 if North Carolina can win at if. home. Otherwise, of course, Connecticut would stick number one going to Monday yes. night's big Monday on ESPN Pittsburgh. against Pittsburgh. So if. it's 84-67. 119 and the Blue Devils doing it again and uh, yes, there'll be other ball. days there'll be other days hey I'll tell you what you went to Northwestern you're very culture minded if wasn't that Mr. Kipling <laughs> if it's Mr. Kipling see you think I'm one dimensional you think I'm just into the very good. stats you like that you shocked you with that one yes, huh? I am. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> I bet some of the dookies don't know that <laughs> Todd Henley on the floor for Wake Forest and uh, jump ball. Last yeah, time I checked that possession, I think it was going to Wake Forest. Wake won 16 in a row last year at home, and they're a basketball team that's going to be so difficult to beat at home. Certainly, you lose to Texas and you lose to Duke on the road. As you look at the numbers, are too hot. 14 assists. Today. That's a career high. 14 assists, a career high. And the, uh, the three ball is uh, knocked down by Jeremy Ingram. He's a uh, he's a freshman out of Kenston. North Carolina, so he knocks down a three. Let, Dick, let's take a look, and you can take us through what uh, what Duke has ahead of them right now. Well, you know, you take a look, and they got Maryland, certainly going to deal with the strength of John Gilchrist and deal with that crowd. That crowd is so electric there. Inside, Smith has become a quick force on the interior with a lot of experience. Tanner Medley can knock down the three. Last year, they beat Duke at Comcast. Then they got a date at Georgetown, who certainly now is finding out after blowing out a bunch of cupcakes that that's not the way you build to get ready to play the competition. Then Leonard Hamilton's done a great job with Florida State. Paul Hewitt, a rising star with Georgia Tech. And then, my friends, it's at North Carolina. And I can't wait when the Dukies and the Heels hook up. It's going to be like old times. I think it's the greatest rivalry in all the college sports. Yes, I think. You may not agree. I think that it's better than the rivalry, even Michigan, Ohio State football, because they're only eight miles apart. I guess I could disagree with that, couldn't I, folks? Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> They're coming out with a book, by the way. Mark Chansky's writing a book about the rivalry Duke in North Carolina. And baseball lovers would say Yankees Red Sox. Cross into Dr. Lee's hands now for the final minute. Duke is up 13, 84 71. One They'll bring time off the clock before they pull the trigger. Great force is pulled back. They've conceded. They're not fouling here. They're going to let the time run down. I'll tell you one thing about Wig. They get Danilus healthy and get him rolling. Like, like I said, they're going to be battling all year up in that first division in the ACC, which is from top to bottom the best. I think the big four are the here ACC. Comes now. ACC certainly got to put it in the Big 12, the SEC, and the Big East. Locking 
foul called against Randolph. Hey, your alma mater had two great wins. They beat Illinois and Iowa. Bill Carmody and a Northwestern basketball team, the Wildcats. Two big wins for them. Allen Williams, a senior guard from Dallas. Doesn't get much playing time. Checking in for the Demon Deacons. Two shots coming up here for Downey. This is the first. Remember now we're sitting on a 13-point margin right now, 84-71. Trying to console him. He knows that he hasn't had the kind of performance he's capable of. What a winner this kid is. I'll tell you, he can play for me any day of the week. I met him over in New York, Brent, and I was so impressed. He's just a beautiful young guy that you would absolutely love to wear your uniform. Son, you're going to be a great player. With that comes some adversity, and he'll battle back. He's certainly not the, uh, He's the first youngster to come in here and uh, experience an off game. You can ask Hodge at North Carolina State, a veteran. Uh, this Duke defense is really something. He's got to get to the cross now. And the final seconds will tick off. The Devils are up a dozen, 84-72, and they will win their 36th consecutive game in Cameron Indoor Stadium. 604 victories. Wow. For Mike Krzyzewski. You know, Chris Duhon had 14 assists, but to me, his strength today was his defense at the point guard slot. Cameron Crazies go bananas. 48 hours, a success. One unbeaten left in the ACC. And the Duke Blue Devils are the one. 14 and 1 overall. They are now 4 0. Once again, our final score Duke wins it by 12. 84-72. For Dick Vitale, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long from Durham. Now, let's send it to Terry Gannon and Digger Phelps back in our studios. Take it away, Terry. All right, Brent. Thank you very much. Digger, uh, a game that uh, we talked about at the half. Wake Forest never going away. The 12-4 run to start the second half. However, just the J.J. Uh, Redick just too much. Yeah, J.J. tough. Justin Gray did a good job cutting at the three. But the other thing is, when you look at J.J. Redick, he always finds a way to get open, and he can always shoot the three when they need it. But Duke's defense, again, they just shut you down, ball pressure, get it done. Another big win for Duke at home. How do you see it in the ACC now, though? I still like these four teams. When you look at Georgia Tech and Wake Forest, they still can explode and beat people. Carolina, we're going to see what to do against UConn. Coming up next, big one for the Duke East today. And that is at the Smith Center. So long for now. Digger and Terry, see you a little bit later on. GMC NBA halftime, hang time, excuse me, is next.